first league match over the board, real life. So we played as white in this game and we opened with our trusted E4. I was going to actually bring out maybe D4 or something else, but I thought, no, for the first game, just playing normal and steady. Um, we didn't know the ratings of the players that we were playing against. Um, none, none of the ratings were put on the board. So I just had to hope for the best and uh, see whether or not we could match the skills of the opponent. So they push through with a C5 and I'm thinking, okay, this looks fairly normal. We can work with this. Brought the knight out. Then they push the pawn down here. And ordinarily we would just push, you know, this pawn. And in my head I'm thinking, yeah, let's just stick with the normal. But something was telling me pushing the pawn up here is going to stop this action or we could get on pass on if they were looking to push past. And it's stopping the knight from jumping into this square here. So... I had an epiphany and I says, oh no, I'm going to do this. And I've always said to myself, don't try anything new when you're playing chess matches. But it's weird when I'm actually on, on the board, I do convince myself that, no, this is right. This is actually better. When in our practice sessions, we, we don't do this sort of stuff. We hit the center pawn. I have seen the computers in evaluations, you know, pushing this pawn and blocking, especially in this sort of situation. I think it's because I'm not used to seeing this pawn here. I don't think I've had many games where the pawn's pushed down here like this. You know, we've either seen the knight coming out more often than not, so then that we can just push it through, and then we're looking for the knight exchanges. So I think in my head, I said to myself, something's wrong here. We can take advantage of that. So we did push the pawn up. Computer doesn't like it. You know, it's minus 0 0.3. So it's not too bad. I was feeling confident about it. But then I realized something. So they pushed through onto the pawn. So I'm thinking, all right, this looks okay. But I feel like I've lost tempo in developing my pieces. You know, because I would probably have got a knight out by now, bishop out, all that sort of stuff. And I'm thinking, I think it doesn't look right, the position. So we attack the king. We're thinking, can we give them things to think about while I'm readjusting to this pawn being in this position here? Something's telling me I'm going to lose out tempo-wise because I'm not going to get my rooks linked up. My pieces aren't going to be developed in the positions that I'm used to seeing. So they bring the bishop through, so I breathe a sigh of relief for that. I'm thinking at least we're going to get a piece off the board. So we take the bishop off the board, so feeling happy about that, but not happy about the current position that I'm already in. And that's basically after move two, is it? You know, or three. So I was really kind of beating myself up, even in this early part of this game. I'm thinking, there's no way I'm going to claw this back now, unless, of course, they make a, a mistake. So the knight takes, so I'm thinking, well, maybe we can take this pawn off here and try and get some redress and get a better position. So we take the pawn, still not happy about it because really I'm helping them develop their pieces. So they're going to have like two pieces developed. I've only got one and my king's not castled. So the bishop does take. So we look to try and push forward again, you know, trying to open up the space in the centre. In my heart, the way that we've played, we're behind about two tempi and I'm trying to claw it back. It might not look like anything on here, but it does to me. These pieces shouldn't be here in this part of the game. So that was the stunner. I, I needed to get these out, but in a good position. And I wanted to try and particularly own this file here because it's looking like it's going to get a little bit airy. But I think I'm two tempi behind. So they bring the knight out, and as soon as they brought the knight out, I thought to myself, yeah, they're going for the castle in. Now they've got three pieces out. I did sit there, and, uh, you know, I was kicking myself. These aren't even developed, so I'm way behind in managing the, the board with any of my pieces. Like I say, it might look like nothing to, you know, anyone watching, but it's a major thing to me, especially the way that we like to play we like to play a little bit explosive. And this, that pawn move there that we pushed up, 
kind of lost us that momentum. So decided now need to get the pieces out quickly, but in a decent position. So we bring the knight out. Then they bring their knight across. I'm thinking, does that give us a little bit of um, tempo back? You know, because he's moved that already. Could have gone and castled maybe. But they're looking to improve their position. Maybe looking to support any attacks coming up here. But also he does have two knights covering this square. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, he's just going to whip my knight off the board and I'm not going to get any chance to breathe. So we take the pawn because we're just thinking, let's get that out of the way. Let's try and get it a little bit airy. But all the while, in the back of my head, I'm thinking, well, if he does take, then I'm going to take. Then his rook is owning the file. And I'm always saying it, aren't I, in the videos, um, especially when the rooks are trying to fight for open files um, and owning files. And it's so key. And the opponent was going to be owning the file with the rook. I kind of saw that way back. But I felt like I couldn't do anything because it was a little bit messy in the middle here. So that's, I really was beating myself up. I'm thinking if this person plays it right, they're going to be owning this file and I'm going to be on the back foot. So the bishop does take. So we take the queen off the board, pretty straightforward. And they took absolutely ages over this next rook move. Um, I'm thinking, what is the complication? But, um, you know... You have to take your time just to find out if you're getting put into a trap or anything. But the key thing is they're owning this file. And I'm never getting that back now. I'm on the back foot. So we castle. And then they castle. So we bring the bishop out, looking to link up the rooks, but also looking to double the pawns as well. Just as a little bit of... What's the word? In my head I was thinking, well, there could be a little bit of credence in terms of getting their pawns doubled as a bit of a weakness because at the moment I'm not in a strong position he's already kind of developed just waiting for him to double his rooks up I know that I've put myself in this bad state on the board right from the start so it is crucial that the first three moves that you make they are the ones that set your game up so you don't have to follow a set maneuvers but so long as you're comfortable and happy with the way that you've done your first three moves and try and stick with what you're kind of familiar with and don't do anything new in a proper official game, then you should stand yourself in good stead. I fell foul of it. I challenged my own mantra, my own answer process, and I fell foul of it, losing tempo. Now they're owning the, the file with the rooks. So kicking myself. So they push down onto the bishop. So I'm thinking, well, okay, we're just going to do a straightforward capture, like we said, just to double the pawn. So they do capture. So I felt a little bit easier now because it basically giving us a little bit of tempo to at least try and challenge the rooks and get rook and get them off the board. So we attack the bishop because knights hunt the bishops just to make sure. But we're also attacking this pawn. So if they are asleep, we will be able to get the pawn with a check on the king. But they weren't asleep, they came back and uh, challenged, so a bit, well, defended. So now we're looking to exchange the rook off. As we said, just very keen to get it off. I was always worried about knight coming here, you know, attacking the pawn, maybe coming here, attacking the pawn, or maybe finding a position whereby he can come here and here, and then he's attacking both pawns. So I sat there for ages, I'm just thinking, let's just get these rooks off the board and see how it plays out. They're going to be happy that they've got a bishop, but because we've got used to working with the bishops now and we were working evenly with the bishops as, as well as with the knights, so I feel comfortable and know what bishops can do and what they can't do. So in my head, I'm thinking if we can keep things locked down a little bit on our pawn majority side, yep, they've got pawn majority on this side, but they are a little bit doubled up. But if you have a look, they do have two linked pawns. And if they work them together, maybe that, that can put pressure towards our single pawn here. Also in the back of my head, I'm thinking, well, okay, if it does go a little bit further, our king can act as a pawn as well. And just basically get these pawns on white squares. If we could get that knight off the board, that would be nice. And then basically it's going to turn out to be a draw. 
at this point, with all the calculation that I was doing, jumping around all over the place, when I did make this move, I did offer a draw. And the opponent looked at the board, and I do believe it's just because they had the bishop that they then declined the offer and said, well, let's just play on a little bit more, which is fine, you know, yeah, you have that choice. Uh, in my head, it did still look drawish, but because they've got the bishop, I think people um, do think that the bishops are stronger than the knights in certain circumstances, but the knights are also stronger than the bishops in certain circumstances. If we can keep it locked down, like we said, we might be able to grab a draw or maybe even a little bit of an advantage. So they declined. And then they push forward onto our knight. So I'm thinking, okay, if they bring that pawn down, then we can actually come here. Then we're supporting this area. Uh, if the rook takes, then we can take. And that should work out okay. So we brought the knight down. And then the magical bishop came and it's targeting through to the b-pawn. So in my head, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, he's going to double my pawns up here. And then his rooks is going to take them all off. But then I realized, well... If we did take the rook, then he takes, yeah, then we could save ourselves because the knight, knight could come here at some point, yeah, because he takes, takes, rook comes here, then we attack their rook with our rook, does he take or not, if he does take, the knight comes here and it's defending this pawn. So we decided to take following that calculation and we attacked the rook and then they decided to capture then we captured then they brought the knight down attacking the pawn twice but again i did kind of visualize ivory was going to be attacking the pawn somehow so we pushed on to the knight and then looking for an exchange at this point i'm thinking we have just recently been practicing quite a lot of end game type games well, we, we weren't practicing, we were put into these sort of positions. So I'm thinking, but this looks, this looks doable. I think we can work this. Um, I'm not scared of this type of end game. But with the opponent not accepting the draw, I'm thinking, right, we need to knuckle down. So we captured. And then I said, well, okay, what's this bishop really doing? Because we've got these pawns here that are on white squares. Now we can start getting our king across, putting pressure on the bishop. Where does the bishop go? Does it hide here or does it go back to where it came from? And we do have a flexible knight. So we should be able to make that work. So we moved the king. They moved their king, moved our king up. They moved the king down. We went to attack the bishop. Bishop went back. So at this point, thinking, okay, if we can get this pawn up here, we know the king's going to potentially try to get into this square here where he's basically looking to take this back pawn. So I tried as best as I could to definitely visualize that that's what their king was going to be doing, getting sighted here. My concern was these pawns, if they were, well, I was just thinking, if they worked themselves together somehow as a little group, there's a lot of pressure to be put on this pawn. So we brought the knight back. So we brought the knight back and basically we're looking at maybe getting this onto a white square at least, not overextending in any way because his white square bishop's ready to go, you know, go for the win. And also it's the potential for attacking this pawn here somehow as well. So looking at all these types of things, really very fearful of these pawns linked up as they are. But I'm thinking we do have a pawn majority on this side. So if we can not swindle the look, but make it look like we've got something, then we're going to maybe start making some inroads. As you can see, it's showing draw at the minute, which is good. So we push the pawn through now, stopping the king from coming into here, into this square. So that's crucial. So at this stage, all I'm thinking now is what can the bishop attack? The bishop can attack the pawn. You know, coming this way, I'm thinking that if we allow it to get into here, it's going to come down here. It's also going to be potentially attacking this pawn or potentially attacking this pawn. So just constantly thinking, how do we gain some sort of advantage? So they pushed down because what we were looking at doing was basically getting this pawn up here at some stage. If the bishop did move, getting the queen here and pushing onto the king. 
but the bishop was always there, so we couldn't get the king in there anyway. So we pushed this pawn, okay, just to basically say, right, okay, if anything's coming down from this pawn here to here, then at least we can get into some sort of capturing. It's also taking it off of the dark square so that the bishop can't take it. So the bishop comes and looks to take our knight. So I can't allow it, well, in my head I'm saying, I can't allow it to take the knight because our king would be going backward. Then his king would be owning these squares. And that's when I would get Zugzwand and they'd be able to come and take the pawns on either side. So we move the knight now with a vision of getting the knight here, squeezing it into here, or to here depending on what actually occurred. This square is probably better because it allows the knight a little bit of freedom to potentially start dancing around and maybe harassing some of these pawns and maybe even these pawns in some funky way. So the bishop moves back again. So at this point I'm thinking, well, we don't really want the bishop being able to get down here because there's nothing supporting other than the knight, and I want my knight being active. Also, bishop potentially coming here, looking to harass, but again, we can push the pawn up, so it's stuck on the back a little bit. But at this point, I thought to myself, well, if the knight does go here, and then the bishop takes this time, then the king can take, because then it would be closer to this square, so the king can't come down and felt a little bit confident that, well, if he's going to try and get these pawns down, our king is at least close enough to stop the actions with the support from these pawns, potentially. Also, with the idea of potentially putting some pressure with these pawns as well. So instead of the king coming backwards, which would be bad, I thought, hmm, this might, this might work. So if they take, we take. Then the king has to go back or he has to make a pawn move that potentially they might not want to make. So it's still showing draw at this moment in time, which is good. You know, that's nice. So the bishop moves. So it's chomping at the bit to get this a pawn. So at this point, I'm thinking, well, you know, if we can get our knight to this crucial square, I was debating between this one, putting a little check on but that would be worse for us because all his king has to do is move and then what is protecting this pawn at the back? And my knight doesn't really have much play. I suppose it could go here, but then it's not doing much. Bishop's blocking off all the angles. So we opted for this beautiful manoeuvre and the vision I had was if his knight, the king came up here, then we could potentially jump here. Yep, and this square would be an optimal square to actually go for the bishop. If they went and attacked it here, then we would get a fork. Yeah, so king, then, then we get the bishop for free. So that's the vision I had when I got to this position. I'm thinking, oh, please, just move there, move there. You know? If he moves here, then we can go here like this with a check. And if he goes to attack it, then we can go and get the get the bishop. So they moved to the position where we could put a check. So we put the check on and hoping and praying that they went here to attack the knight. You know, human nature, you know, you go, oh, I'm going to go get you. And then we would have just gone bam like this. But they took a long time over the move and they realized what was happening. So then we came back with the knight, and at this point, the opponent offered the draw, and obviously I accepted. So, very interesting game for the first game. Um, the opponent was um, higher rated than myself, so I'm quite pleased at that. So it's a very good start to the uh, league season for 2023.